it's been a year since the 2019 Vitality Netball World Cup and Tracy Neville joins me to celebrate and look back on that incredible event. Hi Tracy. Hi Zara, are you okay? Good, thank you. Can you believe it's been a year, firstly? Um, no, um, I think a lot's happened since that year. Um, it felt that um, the World Cup seems so far away when you're obviously planning your four-year cycle and then to come around, it felt so quickly. And then now it feels like it was part of history. Um, it felt like, you know, to say it was a year ago seems too soon um, for what's happened, obviously, in my life since then. Yeah, definitely. But looking back uh, over those 10 days, how do you feel? What, what, what comes to, you know, what comes to mind? What emotion do you feel? Um, I would like to say there were probably four special moments um, for me. Um, I think the first moment was when we moved from Manchester to Liverpool and we actually went into our hotel rooms and behind the scenes, our manager, performance director, CEO and the governing body had done some really special things in our rooms. Um, they got messages from our families, pictures of time we've served with England netball. It, you know, so it was quite emotional to walk into your bedroom and see everything that was part of you in that room and um, everything like it was like so I think we had quite an emotional response from all the girls then um, the second thing I had to be um, it being in our home city and um, in you know in our own town in Liverpool in the northwest and um, where there were so many people that had associated with me in respect to my playing and my coaching career and um, all throughout and um, and it was special to see the girls um, having that experience as well. If I, if I think back, the last um, championships to be in England was in Birmingham in 1995, where we weren't even part of any of that. So to have the opportunity, you know, you've been to a world championship, you've been to Commonwealth Games, you've been on test series all over the world. And finally, your family, friends, coaches, people you've played with, got to experience coming and watching you play. Um, the third thing had to be, um, you know, my dream was always to see a stadium full of red and white. If I think back to when I first started, you know, it was just my mum and a couple of mums sat on a wooden bench in a sports hall. Um, but to see that stadium filled day in, day out and the support and the fan engagement from everyone um, was just, you know, such a unique and it, it was a dream come true for um, all them players who, who have worked so hard and had such a history with the sport um, to, to see that happen. And, and the fourth thing had to be fan engagement. Um, we were fortunate to stay in the Hilton Hotel, um, which overlooks probably one of the biggest fan parks I've ever experienced in my life um, in, in netball. And, you know, to see the sponsors, Vitality, Jaffa and Knight, make it an ultimate experience for not just us as, as players and coaches, but for the actual fan who'd made the trip and spent so much money and, you know, had some uniqueness to netball and enjoy it was, yeah, was, was amazing. And yeah, you, you never, I don't think you could ever replace what happened at that World Cup. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And talk to me more about that fan engagement when you were in the arena and you looked out and there was that sea of red and white and the Tracy lookalikes as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what it that? look better than me, that's the problem. <laughs> I don't believe it, I don't believe it. So, you know, what, was that, what was that like? Sell out crowds, pack readers. Um, do you know, if, it's hard to explain because it didn't just start in the arena, it started as we walked out of the hotel and you know, we had to have security guards, we had to have a seat, you know, we had to have an entry, an entry to come out because the fans didn't just meet us in the arena, they, they met us everywhere we went. They met us in coffee shops, they met us outside our hotel. They were shouting at us on the bus going to the actual game. And so when you walked into the arena, it, it was like a domino effect. It was a build up to the biggest atmosphere that you could ever experience. And um, I, I actually did laugh at the time because obviously they were shouting my name out and, you know, I think that's the first time I've ever heard a crowd in Liverpool shout out the Neville name in, in a real positive way and um, we were actually laughing at that but 
um, I think for me it was the familiar faces as well, you know, around the crowd and, um, you know, being able to, you know, these are people who've been on a journey with England Netball, have been on a journey with the Roses, have been on a journey with us personally. And yeah, it was just, it was just so nice to have that support throughout that particular tournament. And it, you know, you, you talk about losing energy, you talk about sometimes, you know, 10 days is relentless, but every day you woke up to experience that. And it just give you that extra 1%. And, you know, again, some, we had one of the toughest draws going into that um, World Cup final. Um, and, you know, every day we woke up wanting to win. And we wanted to win for not just ourselves, but wanted to win for everybody. It really felt like the whole nation was behind the Roses. I think it was, you know, a culmination. And England wrote, you know, England Network had been on a journey. It didn't just start in Liverpool. No, it's been years in no. the and it just must have felt so special. Commonwealth Games gold medal, and then a year later, it just it was a dream to have a home World Cup. Ah, oh, well, you, you know, if I, if I think my first experience of a major championships was in 1998 in Kuala Lumpur, that was my first experience as a, a like national as a player, and ever since then we, we've been trying to make a difference. We've been trying to make a difference. We've been trying to put. Um, bums on seats we've been trying to get huge crowds we've been trying to sell the sport we've, we've tried to turn it from amateur into professional and this has been over a, a period of you know if I think when I played at 19 this has been over a period of 24 years we we, we want to make our sport big and we, we saw the worthy cause in it the spectacle that netball gives to every single person all over the world um, and you know it felt that that was just the, the penultimate that was how you wanted if you, you know if you wanted to end your career that that's where you wanted to end it in, in that particular stadium and um, it was quite emotional for everybody and um, it was just sad we just couldn't complete the jigsaw um, you know in that semi-final but you know sport is so cruel cool sometimes it is at uh, that moment which was spine tingling when the whole crowd started shouting for Rachel Dunn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, tell me about that moment. Um, it, it, was, it was quite funny, really, because um, I think everyone knew that it could be Rachel's last, probably, game for England. Hopefully she will come on and support, you know, play for England again. And, we, you know, we, we started, we started, the chance actually started just behind us. Um, and then obviously, um, Rachel didn't even clue in, you know, because honestly, the, the subs are always focused on the game. They tend to try and ignore the crowd. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, I'm sat there going, I think they want, do you think they want Rachel on the court? Like, and then it, it was a real difficult one because you always like to say, that, you know, you respect the opposition and, and to make changes in the last few minutes, it, you know, can sometimes be really disrespectful to um, the opposition. And, You've seen it happen loads of times and I've seen it happen to myself where, you know, the team that obviously, you know, deserved to, I, I believe, deserved to see out that game. You know, we it was the second time we played our South Africa. We'd lost to them in January and, we you know, they'd come out and they'd put out a world-class performance, I thought, in that bronze medal playoff. And you, you like to think that they would see out, see out the game. And then obviously they were shouting for Dunn to come on and, and um, you know, and I think I think every single player on the court were just looking around, thinking we have never experienced this in our lives. And I remember signalling to Joe Hart and just saying, "Joe, time." And um, Joe was like, you know, probably one of the you know the most the best players um, I've ever coached. Just you know, respect to her. Just you know, handed a bib over, and and took you know, really wanted to do that for Rachel as well. And it was just gutting that she didn't finish that shot off because if she'd have shot that shot, I think the whole stadium would have, would have erupted. So, um, <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, shoot, shoot. <laughs> but, yeah, and, I, I, you know, fair dues to the South Africans and Norma, you know, the respect they showed after because, like you say, you don't want to disrespect, ever dis disrespect the opposition, particularly in an occasion like that. But I think they got on board with what was happening in the crowd. No, it was just brilliant. And ahead of the tournament, Vitality launched the, the coaching campaign, hashtag we are rising. How important are 
campaigns like that to to grow and pledge support for grassroots coaching? Um, I think I have to applaud Vitality. Um, they were the first sponsors that come on board when I first took over the role um, permanently in 2015. And, you know, I remember speaking to some of their key representatives at, at the organisation and they were so passionate and that they were so about growing the game. And, you know, sometimes sponsors can come in and not have any... Um, you know, not have any part to play with the coach or the players. It, it's just sometimes um, a shot window. But Vitality really wanted to get involved. They wanted they wanted to see grassroots netball grow, and um, and they were always looking for ways of how to do that and um, how to increase the number of um, people within the sport. How to use ambassadors. How to promote participation. But more importantly, they knew the the benefit of netball and the health and social wealth well-being that it actually gives to thousands and thousands of women's ladies girls boys men and 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 you can't dispute that and it's one of the it's the game that everyone's played as a youngster every single person has played as a youngster and you know they they took that moment and what they did is they they weren't just fighting a campaign here and i think sometimes we we do a campaign what they did is they embedded themselves in it and what they wanted is they wanted every single person at that World Cup to be part of um, the we are, we are Rising. And, you know, that was everyone had to score a goal. And, you know, I even got involved. You know, I think I, I tried to score. I think I scored the first 100 goals, and I, you know. And, and it was just about scoring goals. And, and that is it. What they were teaching there is that, you know, whether you're Joe Hart and on the court shooting, um, you know, for, to try and get a World Cup medal, or you're in the fan park with your mum and you're just trying to score so that your mum will be really proud of you. And them are the moments of how we've, we've grown up. So that we are rising is how we've been brought up from when we're young. We just want people to be proud of us. Um, and, you know, you always, you always want to achieve. And, you know, that every single person participated to that. And I think that was, that was quite a real powerful campaign around that particular World Cup. Definitely. No, that campaign is fantastic for doing that and England winning bronze and the tournament itself, just everything has really helped, you know, promote the sport and we've seen an increase in numbers, uh, participation numbers of people, women around the country. So it's absolutely fantastic. How do you feel about the legacy that the tournament has created? Um, you, you know, you... I've been playing netball since I was five. Um, and they say about giving back, particularly when you've made it, um, you know, you, you've been fortunate to play for England. But it, it's more, the, le the legacy that was set, it, it's more than the, you know, the number of people that bought memberships to me, the number, of, you know, it was about the, the number of people that got involved in netball. And netball, that people don't understand is it's not just about putting a bib on and going out on court. That is something that a lot of people can't do. A lot of people though can get involved by coaching. They can be a manager, they can be a volunteer, you know, so you don't have to play netball to get the, the well-being around what that sport can offer. And um, there's so many things that you can do to support people um, that actually works to your um, strength as well. So, you know, netball is about the social aspect of it, you know, about selling stuff, about being part of something. And I think that is what really um, it, it was all about, that legacy. It was about being part of something that was absolutely huge for netball in the UK. Um, and it's only sad at the moment that that has stopped. Um, and I hope that soon the government see, you know, how essential this is to you know just everybody out in the country from my my niece to my mum and who is still playing the sport and how, how crucial it is for them and how it has helped some support and has supported them through some difficult times in their lives as well yeah we're all missing it uh, what bit of advice would you give to to coaches we've all had to adapt uh, players coaches in lockdown you know what would you what would you say to coaches right now who are doing amazing things you know i i want to put something on twitter but i don't think i can find the actual words for it because 
you, you could you could treat this um, lockdown and isolation period in a real negative way. And what's made me so proud here is that coaches, coaches, teams, franchises have been so in, innovative in the way that they've approached this situation. They've found different ways of connecting people without actually turning up to places and you know giving up hours of their time to do it. And that for me is so special. I, I look now um, at the situation in I'm in where I'm not coaching at the moment. I've got a four month old baby. I feel like I've got no time, but there's now ways and avenues that I can connect to people, coach people without having to drive two hours to be able to do that. And, and I think this is the new, this is the new norm. This is the new future of netball that coaches can really connect with girls who struggle to travel. You know, I, I started out playing and there were players around me who, you know, were getting buzzed, taxis to get, get to s &C sessions, to get to training. Now coaches, what have made me so proud is they found different ways of coaching and, and training them girls without them having to go through all that rigmarole. And now with, and, and it's a more safer method and it will give players and ta um, athletes more time. One of the things that an athlete always says to me is, I just don't feel I've got any time to do anything. And, um, you know, to incorporate all this, the moments in my life that I need to make me happy. And I feel that now they have got the time and we've got different ways that we can approach this to, to be a real positive. So then coaches out there who are finding or working with um, the plan to get people back on court and, you know, finding all these. I'm so proud of the way you're handling this and the way that you're still keeping people um, connected to our sport because... You guys are the ones that can influence so many more people than what I can influence. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you, Tracy. And yeah, thank you so much for chatting. You know, all things Netball World Cup and <laughs> congratulations on everything that you did as head coach. And I'll let you go because I know you are very busy. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Thank you.